Welcome, Take It Up with Jessica Lee. I'm here with Narash Rivastava, who is the Senior Director of Customer Success from Broadsoft. Narash, welcome. Thank you. Now you are part of Cisco, right? Yes. So everyone is curious to know what's going on now that you're part of a big company. How are things going? Things have been busy. Mm. Since we got acquired more than a year ago, okay. there has been so much growth, so much opportunity. It's just a lot of work, but they're exciting. Yes, and it's a huge market, right? Tell us how, how big is this opportunity and what's so exciting for you? Absolutely. So as you know, Broadsoft was a wipe contact center, UCAS company that was acquired by Cisco last year. Mm -hmm. And the market that Cisco is trying to go after is a $25 billion plus addressable market in contact center. And so our business is growing huge. Mm -hmm. We are the leaders in the on-prem space and now taking the cloud world by, by storm as well. Yes, yeah. so you know, uh, when Cisco first bought Broadsoft, a lot of companies were wondering what's going to happen to them because they were relying on the Broadsoft platform to do their business. Well, the Cisco has always been a partner-led company, mm -hmm. and Broadsoft go-to-market was very much the same. And so it's been a, a very good transition where we've had a complementary set of technologies help the market. And Broadsoft was targeting more SMB in the mid-market, and we've really seen the two technologies come together. So uh, we do see some of the transitions obviously affect existing customers, mm -hmm. where they feel like there's a, there's a bit of a tension there, but we've seen a very healthy transition over the course of the past year. Watsoft itself is half a billion dollar in revenue trending. That's but, right. But you focus specifically on the contact center, sure. the cloud mm -hmm. part. Yeah. So Broadsoft, as you know, was a public company. Revenue numbers were known. They were trending towards half a billion when they got acquired last year. Mm -hmm. uh, as we have merged, now we are part of the collaboration business unit within Cisco. Okay. And the Cisco collaboration business unit is a large a business unit with more than a you know five to six billion dollars in revenue a uh, year. And a big portion of that is subscription revenue, which is mm -hmm. one of the largest subscription revenues, by the way, uh, mm -hmm. across other industries. So. It's a, it's a really gr big growth engine for Cisco today. But I'm surprised that you have only 20 plus people in your team, given that it is a very big uh, amount of revenue that you're responsible for retaining. So the specific revenue for a contact center is smaller, but mm -hmm. still the, uh, the go to market has always been a partner led mm -hmm. for Cisco and Broadsoft. Okay. Uh, now the partners are the ones who are responsible for managing their customers. Our primary responsibility is to make sure that the partners and the customers are, you know, get value from the product, mm -hmm. are enabled with respect to the overall success uh, of their own customers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it does take a lot to go and help grow the, 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 the revenue, but we are seeing a lot more demand in the market, so we are actively hiring within the team as well. Okay. So let's talk about the hiring part. Now, I I'm uh, I must say I applaud you for having zero attrition in your team. You've even had customers who jump over to join your team. Yes. So personally speaking, I've been very much focused on making sure that the team has an open line of communication mm -hmm. that has really helped our customers to go join our team. Mm -hmm. And with the tremendous success that we have seen, there is a lot more opportunity for uh, people who are outside of the business unit to come come join, as well as we are looking outside. So obviously there's a, there's a big opportunity, but obviously the customer success growth has seen teams from other parts of the organization join us as well. So what are you looking for then? Now you're hiring, you know, let's, let's hear for uh, the audience who might be interested. Who, what do sure. you look for in a customer success manager? So customer success manager by default is someone who could have been doing account management or could have been doing technical support but really is very much customer focused. Mm -hmm. Customer advocacy is a big portion of the, the part of the job. And so if you look at CSMs who are managing large accounts, they generally have experience either in consulting mm -hmm. or experience in account management, uh, either technical account or uh, technical sales. And so it's a combination of different skills that they have to bring to bear. And we have seen a huge growth in the industry itself, yes. in the function itself. Yes. 
and so, the importance of this role. Exactly, exactly. So customer success managers and the leaders of customer success now have a seat at the table. Mm-hmm. Uh, it used to be the case that uh, mostly it was sales, product, engineering, who and finance, who and uh, and marketing, who used to have a seat at the table at the at the board. But now you see more and more customer success hof- officers yes. having a seat at the board. So it's definitely a growing growing function. Now you love to do coaching and mentoring. I do. Yeah. So w- what is your approach to that and your philosophy? So there is two things that I I do. What what I do is I want to make sure that. The team knows where where uh, where the north star is. Mm. Uh, show them the way, lead the way, and then get out of the way so that there is open line of communication, and that has really helped the individuals get to the next level because they are trusted in what they are doing or mm-hmm. they're tasked to do. Mm-hmm. At the same time, um, what it, what has helped really me is get va- gain value of out of my own team to get skills that I thought I did not have. Mm-hmm. And so I've personally believed uh, in Ray Dalio's approach, which is, you know, everything is coachable. Everyone is coachable. Mm. And if I have personally made mistakes, I'm, I want to be called out for it. And so that has really helped my team have a very, very open line of communication, helped me personally because through them, I'd be able to go learn myself and, of course, others in the team as well. Okay. So what metrics do you go by in terms of pushing them, pushing the whole team forward? So in terms of metrics, there is obviously metrics that are defined by the role as well as the individual. Mm-hmm. So if I look at a customer success manager, their metrics are always driven by specific KPIs that are responsible for achieving. So uh, there are things like uh, you know retention s- uh, scores or over net churn mm-hmm. is a big portion of their own um, you know metric. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, the amount of upsells that they are able to go bring to the table as well as the overall satisfaction of the customer is a big portion of the of their own metric. Now, depending upon the segment of the customer they're serving, uh, their metrics may be different in terms of percentage uh, retentions, mm. but the goal for the CSM is always to make sure that the customer is happy with the product and they're able to go and uh, uh, retain them and the customer is satisfied. What about revenue growth? So they measure also on revenue? So that used to be the case when we were at uh, Broadsoft, mm. but now as we've, we're getting merged into Cisco, uh, those metrics are in the process of changing. Uh, and so we were responsible for both renewals as well as upsells right. in my team, okay. but now we're transitioning those uh, responsibilities to sales. Okay, excellent. Yes. Um, I want to uh, talk about career advice because you, you, you've you been with the company. You came from actually Deloitte Consulting, and mm-hmm. then you shift in this area. Um, any career tips that you want to share with those who want to get into this role and, uh, I guess, leadership role in the customer success function? Absolutely. So uh, what I've seen, at least from my experience, is that uh, really there is no one path that one can take in terms of joining a certain function if they're interested. Mm. Uh, people who are project managers but really are uh, passionate about working with customers, working with people, uh, they are a very good fit for joining customer success. Uh, what I've seen personally in my experiences that customers who were paying our bills really were passionate about working with customers. They loved our product and they loved the fact that, you know, I had a very good relationship with them. They ended up coming and joining my team. (laughs) And so that was one way that I saw customers going in and, 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 you know, helping themselves grow in that, in that function. Mm. Um, The other Part or the other path that, that I've seen is the sales uh, folks who are sales engineers or who are in, responsible for account growth. And they are very much interested in post sales account growth mm-hmm. uh, because when you look at subscription economy, the, once the software gets sold, it's no longer that the customers are you know selling the soft uh, buying the software and uh, you know the the salespeople are saying oh you know. Uh, software is yours, bye-bye. It's a subscription economy. And so with subscription economy, it's, and we want to make sure that the customers are happy yes. with, the, with the software that they have purchased because it's being provided as a service. And so sales managers are more and more stepping into customer success roles. Yes. So, 
Let's talk about the challenges because I think it's actually a great role. You wear many hats. You, know, you do the support to make sure clients are happy, but at the same time, you focus on company growth mm -hmm. to make sure that you retain and grow that client. Um, so I think it's a great job. But what are some of the challenges that customer success teams face, especially in this fast-paced, you know, dynamic um, contact center that's moving to the cloud? Absolutely. So there's at least two things that I can see which are very much uh, a day-to-day -day challenge or opportunity, whichever way you want to look at it, which is making sure that there is a fine balance between the customer's needs and what the product can offer. Mm. And so it's a very delicate balance that customer success managers have to play because a lot of times the, cus the customer's needs are driven by what they may have purchased prior to adopting a certain product. So for example, if they are transitioning from another solution to ours, they have a certain set of uh, ideas in mind of how a certain product works, or they have a certain set of requirements, and they always try to fit themselves, uh, to put it in simple wor words, uh, a square peg in a round hole. Mm. And it never really works that way. You're talking and about like from-prem to the cloud? From-prem to cloud, migration. Or, from, um, or cloud to cloud. A cloud to cloud. Okay. Because uh, certain features may not be available or certain requirements may be met in a certain different way. And so the customer success manager's key responsibility day of day is to make sure that if the product doesn't have those features, that they work with the product team to ensure that the customer's feedback is provided. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, work with customers to ensure that their requirements are, requirements are met. So it's a day to day challenge to ensure that they are equipped with, with the right uh, product collateral they're equipped with the right training, and ensure that they are really there to help the customer be successful. Right, so, so setting the expectations with the client, uh, what they wish may not be available now, but at least it's being heard and maybe planned down the road. Exactly, right? exactly. Uh, so that means they need to have a lot of technical knowledge about the technology, what it's capable of, and then what the other players may be providing out there to have that conversation. It's interesting you say that because it's truly the fact for for our product. Mm. Now, it may not necessarily be the case for other products because their product is really very much, uh, you know, requiring um, three clicks and you're done. Here, it's a product that's being used day in, day out by, you know, operations or for by marketing folks to go run their campaigns or to, to run their overall customer engagement. Uh, and or even analytics on how the customers are, are targeting or working with the with the sales reps. Mm -hmm. So uh, our platform requires a deep knowledge of the product, a deep knowledge of the industry. So to sum it up, really, the CSM or the customer success managers really need to have that knowledge or at least a, a good understanding of the industry. Yes. So that's important. A lot of training, a lot of technical content knowledge. True, true. And and a lot of industry knowledge as well. Yes, that's very helpful. And competitive knowledge too. Absolutely. Is, is that something you also have to do as part of customer success is the competitive landscape and knowing the, the technical function features of other players? Sure, absolutely. We have to be always up to speed on what the other other uh, players are looking at because mm -hmm. one of the things that you would, you would have heard of in sales parlance is objection handling. Yes. Where you go out in the field and you say, our product does X, whereas the customer says, oh, you know, by the way, our your comp com competition has Y, and there's this uh, set of uh, uh, battle cards that you come up with, and you say, by the way, we can, we can do X, but at the same time, you can do this to make Y. And so the CSN teams really need to be equipped with those objection handling, and they work very closely with our product teams to have those battle cards available. Very interesting. I mean, that's something salespeople definitely are trained. Uh, right. But uh, this is the first time I'm hearing that customer success managers are also trained uh, to handle all the sales objections. Sure. <laughs> because once the product gets sold, at a lot of times the person who made the decision versus the, product, the person who is actually using the product may not have alignment in terms of uh, what the product could offer or mm -hmm. how the product behaves. Mm -hmm. And so day-to-day -day functioning of the product, the questions that come back from the users have to be really met with uh, with objections or with with uh, proper coaching so that the customer understands that uh, they they did invest in the, in the technology and they are getting value out of right, it. Right, right. Fascinating. Well, it's been a great 
conversation, Naraj. Absolutely. I appreciate you sharing your thoughts from this customer uh, success one of you in the uh, you know, contact center in the cloud. Sure. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. And it's thank you so much for having me. And we wish you to uh, come back and share a lot more because uh, I know that there's been a fast adoption migrating from on-prem to the cloud. I would love to. You're this seeing... is a huge transition yes. going on right now. And as you can imagine, as we talked before the show, mm -hmm. the transition from on-prem cloud is just starting. Yeah. And it's going to grow at a tremendous pace over the course of the next few years. Okay. Looking forward to another chat. Soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks to those who are watching Take It Up with Jessica Lee. 